Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Bulls. On today's episode, we'll be breaking down the newly released schedule for the Chicago Bulls in the 2022-23 season. We'll also talk about this new Rivals Week in the NBA and what that could mean going forward. And then lastly, we'll talk about an update on an injury to a Chicago Bulls point guard. Not the point guard you're thinking is Goran Dragic. We'll get into all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central. Path of Designer is not here today, so I'm holding it down for the team today solo. Nonetheless, uh, we got exciting things to come down. So we do have the release of the Chicago Bulls schedule, the NBA schedule as a whole, but uh, this is Chicago Bulls podcast. So we do have the <laughs> the uh, release of the Chicago Bulls schedule. Also, the NBA starting something new, which we'll talk about. But this schedule for the Chicago Bulls and looking at this, it's it's. It's not going to be what it was last season. The Bulls are going to be tested early on in the season. The first two months of the season are actually really solid as far as the schedule for the season. Then the last 10 to 15 games of the season as well are very, very solid for them. And we'll break that down and talk about it. But first, I want to talk to you guys about the the national television schedule for the Chicago Bulls. So the Bulls do have 14 nationally televised games, three of those being on TNT. So we get to see the return of the TNT Bulls in a little bit shape, form, and fashion that, you know, me and Pat have talked about that we did want to see from this team is how this team was going to get back on TNT. But then other than that, we have a lot of games televised on ESPN and NBA TV next season as well. So that's where we're going to start at. We're going to start talking about those nationally televised games, and then we'll break down, talk about other parts of the schedule. So first up, our first nationally televised game is going to be against the Philadelphia 76ers um, on NBA TV. Um, this one's at home uh, on October 29th, so not too far into the start of the season, about 10 days into the start of the season the first time. Uh, Casual fans are going to get to see the Chicago Bulls on national TV. Now, after that, we do have against Charlotte, who's apparently our rival in Rivals Week, and we'll talk about why with that here shortly. But then the next one after that is November 2nd against the Charlotte Hornets on ESPN, and then against the Boston Celtics November 4th on ESPN as well. Uh, Phoenix, November 30th. Uh, New York, uh, December 14th. Philly, uh, January 6th, those are all on ESPN, and then we go back to NBA TV against Boston on January 9th, Detroit uh, January 19th, and then Atlanta January 23rd. Io DeSumo's son is on that team, so it's kind of a father and son day. Um, and then we get to our first TNT games. We have a TNT game against the Charlotte Hornets, which is our Rivals Week game on January 26th. We'll talk about that in the next segment, and then also against the Brooklyn Nets February 9th, and then against the Milwaukee Bucks on February 16th. Those are all on TNT. So all those TNT games happen um, in uh, February, January, February, in the January, February area. And then we're back to ESPN against Brooklyn, February 24th. And then finally, our last nationally televised game, ESPN, April 5th against the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's a nationally televised schedule. And so while the Bulls have almost, I think, over actually doubled the amount of nationally televised games they had since last season. It's still not as much as what it was during kind of the heyday, uh, not even the heyday of the Chicago Bulls, like during the Derrick Rose era and even a couple of years after that. But 14 nationally televised games is actually pretty solid when you look at it around the league. How are the Chicago Bulls going to perform in those nationally televised games is key because we did not play very well in the games that we were televised last season. So hopefully the Bulls have better showing. Hopefully we see the return of the TNT Bulls in which they continue to be undefeated defeated on that platform but through and through i am i am excited that we get more nationally televised games like i said me i'm subscribed to league pass so it almost doesn't matter i'm going to catch every every single chicago bulls game regardless right i'm, I'm always going to find a way to watch it but it's, it's just good and you know as we said in yesterday's episode chicago is the third largest media market in the world so yes they're going to get some nationally televised games. We always have. Even when we were bad, we've gotten some nationally televised games. But that 14 number, you know, some some people I've, I've, I've kind of watched and tracked the reaction from Bulls Nation after the schedule was released. And some people thought, hey, is th this feels like a little low. 14 nationally televised games is actually pretty solid and a big uptick from what we had last season. So outside of that, the Chicago Bulls schedule is almost completely flipped whereas last season we started off with a pretty light schedule we finished with a very tough schedule I think like eight of our last 10 games if not more than that were against uh, teams that were going to be in the playoffs the Bulls start the season off 
pretty pretty uh pretty good they're going to be tested early so of course as we know we've talked about already our first game of the season is against miami and that is uh october 19th and then after that uh, a couple days later we face at washington uh which washington we'll see but then we face the cleveland cavaliers on october 22nd and then we go to boston uh t october 24th and we have indiana san antonio philly brooklyn charlotte boston toronto twice uh new orleans denver new orleans again orlando boston milwaukee uh okc utah phoenix that's that's just october and november right so that's right there is pretty is way more solid than what we started off last season and then we start off december and it's a nice get a nice we start off december with the golden state warriors uh december 2nd uh and then we got sacramento washington We'll see how those teams end up panning out. But then we have Dallas, Atlanta, New York and New York on a home and home. Minnesota, Miami, Atlanta, New York again. Houston, uh, where well, Houston's not projected to be that good. But then we go through another murderer's row. We got Milwaukee, Detroit, Cleveland twice, Brooklyn, Philly, Utah, Boston, Washington, OKC, and Golden State. So as you see, like I've taken us now through the schedule until January 15th. Now, yeah, there are definitely some games in there against teams that aren't projected to be as good. There's also some teams in there that we don't quite know yet, right? New York, while me and Pat have been very vocal on the fact that we think New York is still going to be a middling team in a way, um, but we'll see how that team comes together. Isaiah Hartenstein, uh, adding Jalen Brunson, uh, there's been talks that they are uh, revisiting these Do uh, Donovan Mitchell trades, so we'll see what New York and how New York ends up shaping up, but outside of that, Dallas, we know is going to be a, a tough team. Phoenix, we know is going to be tough. Utah, we'll see how Utah ends up shaping out. I do like the the um, players and, and everything that they got back in that Rudy Gobert deal as, as something to kind of maybe be able to fill in right away. Um, the Milwaukee, Boston, we know that those two teams are going to be tough and were tough for us last season as well. Orlando's also going to be an interesting matchup. They add in the number one overall pick. They were a team that... You know, while we did beat, I think, twice last season, uh, they gave us some matchup trouble in two of those games and ended up winning one of them as well. So, the, and then Toronto. We have a home and home in Toronto November 6th and November 7th. So, it this 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 season is not going to be, like, the, the beginning of the season is not going to be easy by any stretch. Like, where the Bulls started off last season and a bunch of the thing is, well, they haven't beaten, they haven't played anyone. They haven't played any of the the, the top teams. The, the Bulls. At least by what's shaped up, unless something and things can always go left, right? You can get a team that has an injury or a team that maybe not gels with some of their new acquisitions. But this season is not going to the start of the season can't be dictated as easy. The strength of schedule for the Chicago Bulls to start the season is going to look very good. And the Bulls are going to be tested early. Now, I want to talk about the back end of the of the of, of the of the schedule as well, because the Bulls don't finish easy at all. We're going to go. We're going to just start with. March 3rd, right? Let's, let's just start from March 1st, just, just to be even. We have Detroit March 1st, and then we have Phoenix, and then Indiana, then Denver, Houston, Sacramento, Minnesota. We'll see how that stretches out. But then March 8th, I mean, March 18th, we got Miami. Then we got a home and home against the, the 76ers. A home and home is when we... Uh, when we face them at home and then we turn around and go into their home court so that that's how that works and then we got portland portland's going to be an interesting team this year dame being back hopefully fully healthy uh they've added jeremy grant they got Shaden sharp as well um and then you know it still got anthony simon still got Nurkic. like that's going to be interesting we'll see how and what that matchup is then we got the los angeles lakers then we got the clippers then we got the lakers again then charlotte who technically is our rival i guess and then atlanta milwaukee dallas detroit so and, and detroit is one of those things I, I look at detroit like detroit can be one of those teams that may not take a leap this season they may too let me be clear detroit pistons may very well take a leap but they they could definitely be one of those teams that hey even if you beat them it's going to be a tough and fun matchup with looking at that young athletic team that they're putting out there this schedule was not easy by any stretch of the Chicago Bulls. And I, I didn't even start. Like, we end February tough, too. Like, to end February, we got Milwaukee, Boston, Washington, Toronto, um, all before uh, March 1st. Uh, and then, like, so the, the schedule for the Chicago Bulls this season is a lot more balanced. Um, you do have a nice mix of teams that are projected to be playoff teams with some teams that are a little middling. And then with some of the bad teams in there as well. But... Like I said before, that, that the question of how the Chicago Bulls team is going to match up against some of them is going to be answered in a way very early in the season. Now, the thing with that is as well is that just because however the Bulls look early in the season, as we saw last year, may not mean how they look at the end of the season because they could. As this team continues to gel, uh, maybe a player takes a leap, things like that. Dalen Terry may emerge, whatever happens there, you know. 
the team could look off good and maybe even look better at the, by the end of the season. It could off looking kind of okay and look better by the end of the season, or it could look great to start and it maybe look worse towards the end. We'll see how it continues to go in the storylines that develop over the course of the season. But one thing, I do like that these Bulls are going to, I, I, I love the, the early part of the this, this schedule. I love the schedule overall, right? But I love the fact that we are that we come in the season facing teams that are projected to be good teams. We face uh, the the defending Eastern Conference champions two times in the first two weeks of the season. So that's going to be a really a really solid look at these Chicago Bulls to see over the course of the first ten games we face. We faced about 10 playoff teams, 10, 10 teams that were either play in or playoff teams last season uh, while I did my little counting there for a second. So that's going to be interesting to see how that develops and what develops over the course of the season for the Chicago Bulls. Now, next up, we're going to talk about this new introduction that the NBA is doing this season, and that is the Rivals Week. But first, got a message from NHTSA from you guys. So you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You make it home okay. It's no big deal. But what are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car or you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risk of drunk driving. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, Bulls fans. So the NBA is introducing a fun, con at least something that I consider a fun concept, and that's the, the, the introduction of Rivals Week. So over the course of a week um, during the NBA season, what the NBA is doing is pairing teams that are rivals or players that are technically rivals, and that's what, what the show that's being put on. And I, actually, and I actually think that this is a pretty solid idea. Like, I really love the concept of this. So um, so Rivals Week, uh, just in, the, in their blurb, in the announcement of this, uh, Rivals Week is described as a classic budding rivalries between teams and players that will highlight the week of January 23rd. NBA Rivals Week will feature 11 nationally televised games across four networks TNT, ESPN, ABC, and NBA TV over five days from Tuesday, January 24th to Saturday, January 28th. Um, so the matchups during this week are Boston, Miami, uh, the Clippers and Lakers, Brooklyn and Philly, Memphis and, uh, Memphis and Golden State, Chicago and Charlotte, which we'll talk about, Dallas and Phoenix, Memphis and, and, and Minnesota, Toronto and Golden State Warriors, Denver and Philly, New York Knicks versus the New York Nets, and the Lakers versus Boston. So the Lakers get two games in that. You know how I feel about the Lakers. I'm tired of them being aired on national TV as much as they are. But it, it, it is what it is. They got the the best player currently in the world. Well, one of the best players in the world. And then they have, uh, um, you, you know, it, it, it happens there. And one of the most storied uh, franchises ever. So with the introduction of this Rivals Week, right, for the NBA, I really like this concept. Like, I think uh, the NBA, I'm surprised the NBA hasn't done things like this before. And as you look at the NBA, as they're trying to find new and interesting ways to market things, um, even going so far as we know that they're talking and considering an in-season tournament. And don't be surprised if maybe this slot, right, that we see this Rivals Week ends up becoming where that mid-season tournament is held. Just be on the lookout for that. If, I, if it ends up happening, remember, hey, said it here first. But with that being said, the introduction of this Rivals Week is an interesting one. And it's been a while since the NBA has really done something that, um, you know, other than the play-in, of course, the play-in definitely was, was something that they introduced that was a little bit different. But I'm looking at this Rivals Week and then the Chicago Bulls being listed as rivals for the Charlotte Hornets, right? That's my initial. I'm like, the Charlotte Hornets, so they really are rivals? Like, I can think of the Heat. I can think of, of course, Detroit, who is our, our, our historic rival. The Cleveland Cavaliers are as well. Um, I can even think of the way that stuff developed with Atlanta, like and because that's Io's son on that team, that, that could be a way to look at it. Like, there's a lot of uh, other teams that could be interesting uh, spins to be rivals for the Chicago Bulls. Now, in this one, though, they specifically on this release listed as LaMelo versus uh Leangelo no not Leangelo Lamelo versus Lonzo Ball what am I talking? that's just gonna get everybody stirred up on Leangelo Ball being it's not gonna happen people 
But with that being said, um, so it's it's a battle of the ball brothers. It's basically what it, what it boils down to. Now, I love the concept of that. Now, what I'm saying with that is that hopefully now the NBA is building this. Whole, and so I have this like weird theory, right? So Rivals Week is in January. When the Chicago Bulls, the way they released their schedule on social media is that they released it in chunks. And each one of these chunks, was, it was a month of the season, and it had a different player of our starting five on that on that image. And Lonzo Ball was on January. I'm just saying, hopefully, I'm not. they're not saying that Lonzo isn't going to be back till January, that that's not like some subliminal messaging there that they're trying to tell us that Lonzo Ball is not going to be back until January. But with that being said, look, when wording it that way, like looking at it and making it, it's the it's the Ball brothers against each other. That's the rivalry there. I actually do like that, right? There's storylines into that. And you already know, like NBA and what their marketing does, like Rivals Week marketing and social media stuff is going to be crazy. And I can't wait to see it because, yeah, they're going to do like these whole vignettes and things of like of of, of the, the, the rivals and stuff. And having the Ball brothers against each other, their accolades and like there's this constant conversation. Who's the better Ball brother? Are all the Ball brothers going to play together, which is never going to happen. But with that being said, that playing in like the NBA playing into these rivalries, even one of the rivalries that, that were listed, even though it's listed as Denver versus Philly. On the rivalry schedule, it's listed as Embiid versus Jokic. So it's interesting. Like they're they're doing this thing with the players. I think that it's a smart idea. It's a smart marketing ploy. I, like I said, I just I think you could have found a better rival for the Chicago Bulls than the Charlotte Hornets. But looking at the basketball played, right? The the matchups that we had against the Hornets last season were all fun. Um, seeing the Ball brothers face off against each other, fun. Um, just them guarding each other, just all that. It, it was fun. And Lonzo got the better of LaMelo in, in one of those matchups for sure. As far as not not maybe even scoring more than him, but just the way that it, the defense he played on his brother. So looking at this rivalry week thing, like it, it's it's I want to hear from you guys. Like sound off down below if you're on the YouTube side or if you're on the podcast side, please, uh, please send in any of your thoughts um, on it. I just want to look this up. Okay. And so please, uh, please send in any of your thoughts on what you think about this rivalries week. Do you think this is a thing that the that the um, the NBA can continue to build on? Um, I I, th- I think that it can. I think that I think that when you're looking at this being the, the introduction of something like this, it's definitely going to be something that uh, that they continue to you know look at. They continue to to see what they what they can build out of this. What rivalries develop over a season, and then you're going to say, "Hey, I can't wait for this to be um, to be." own rivalry week, week next season like you can you, you're always going to see that the storylines develop right so as that as that as that comes to fruition and things like that it's, it's going to be very interesting um in my in my opinion to see how this continues to develop but the the, the matchup of Lonzo and LaMelo Ball I just want to talk about this for for a second um so they've played uh, uh, three games against each other so far in the NBA seasons, right? Uh, LaMelo Ball has averaged 17.3 points, nine assists, and seven rebounds in three games against his brother in his career. So even though the stats are uh, are kind of in favor, uh, I, I would say, of LaMelo Ball, um, I do think that, you know, when it was the Bulls, who won those matchups, right? The Bulls, I believe, won uh, when the, the game that, Lonzo and LaMelo faced off against each other. So that's going to be something that we, that's going to be, like I said, it's going to be interesting to watch. Hopefully Lonzo is fully healthy. I hope that, you know, by the NBA betting on this, that, that, you know, it, it, it would be a, a big blunder uh, to see uh, this rivalry week of Lonzo Ball versus LaMelo Ball and then Lonzo not be able to play. Now on the flip side, Lonzo has averaged 11 points, five assists and two rebounds in three games against his brother over the course of his career. So yeah, LaMelo Ball definitely, uh, definitely winning the stats battle in that way. But the rivalries, rivalries week, um, I would almost like to see it almost turn into two weeks. Like, and I, I, get, I get it. Like, am I being greedy? Absolutely, because we haven't even got one yet. So it's good. It, am I being greedy asking to say for two weeks of it? Yeah, but I'd like to see because teams have multiple rivals. 
And I would like to see it turn into this thing where you face all your rivals. Like you pack in all the rivalry games um, over the course of that time, that that two week period, rather than just forcing it into a week. But I do think this is one of the, like I said, one of the more interesting concepts the NBA has come up with for a while. I'm glad that they're doing something interesting, trying to add a little bit more flavor in there during the season, especially at points of the season. Kind of matchups just become what they are. You build it up. It's going to be hyped. Um, like I said, the media train for it is going to be bananas, and I can't wait to see that. But, uh, yeah, that is it for me talking about Rivals Week. Rival, Rivals Week. Yeah, Rivals Week. Uh, so we're going to get into the uh, next topic, which is us talking about the injury to Goran Dragic. But first, got to talk to you guys about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top resource for all your sports wagering and information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They got you covered. Head to BetOnline today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet online, it's where the game starts. All right. So if you guys are signed up for notifications like I am, I get notifications about everything Chicago Bulls. I usually don't even have to search for news because the way I have my Google alerts, the way I have my alerts from certain websites, I get all the Chicago Bulls news. So this came across my uh, Twitter and shout out to Daniel Greenberg, Chai Sports Updates on Twitter. You guys should follow him if you're a fan of Chicago sports. Uh, tweeted out that Goran Dragic suffered a knee injury. That is the first line. And that literally made me be like, oh, here we go again. Then a space and then a couple of lines down. Oh, but it's not worried to be. It's not it's not fear to be serious. What? Like, don't like listen. Greenberg, I love you, bro. I love you. I love what you do uh, for the community. I love what you bring to to, to Chicago sports and, and updating us on everything. You can literally follow this man and get all your updates on Chicago sports without needing to go to anywhere else. Like he, he's he's on top of it. He's quick. Um, and he yeah, it's, he's amazing at what he does. But with that being said, my brother, you cannot in this day and age of Chicago Bulls history with knees and point guards. Tweet out something like that and not have in that first line that he's also going to be okay. So I'm going to read the direct tweet. This is from Daniel Greenberg. Chicago Bulls point guard Goran Dragic suffered a knee injury during today's Slovenia versus Serbia. Then a space. And then another line. A spokesperson for Slovenia national team tells me that it's not considered serious and is very minor. You Start off with that. Like the whole Red Fox thing. Like that's what I started to do. Like I was nervous. My heart. I was I was. And again, I don't even expect Goran Dragic to necessarily have a big impact for the Chicago Bulls. I don't expect for him to play very many minutes for the Chicago Bulls. I know that that whole article about, oh, well, uh, 20, uh, 25 minutes got some people thinking that Goran Dragic is going to play a bigger role than I think what he's going to. But we'll see how that works out. But I'm just tired of the injuries. I don't want to start off another season with injury. We just got an injury to Justin Lewis. We didn't even know how he was going to factor into this team. I'm tired of injuries when it comes to my Chicago Bulls, and I know we are as well. We suffer from PTSD, especially when it comes to knee injuries in Chicagoland, just period. You talk about knee injuries, we start panicking, right? We start panicking. Knees and guards between Lonzo, Derrick Rose, uh, uh, Zach Levine, like, listen, we get extremely, extremely nervous when it comes to something with knees in, in Chicago sports, period. So it's good that it's not going to be something major, but I do think that this points into, again, Goran Dragic, I feel, was brought in to be a depth piece. I know a lot of Bulls fans, and like I said, because of that article, think that Goran is going to have this huge role on the team. I had a conversation with somebody in the comments as well who's like, well, I think that Goran Dragic is going to probably get more minutes than Io. And I'm looking at that and like, you think from what Io DeSumo was able to give the Chicago Bulls team. He was trusted to be the starting point guard at a time where we didn't need it. He even started off this, his rookie season after being a second-round pick, and a lot of people think he was going to spend a lot of time in G League getting NBA minutes right away. Goran Dragic just looking at a fully healthy Bulls team, and that's if it's fully healthy. Now, if it's not, this is a different conversation. But if Lonzo Ball is ready to go at the start of the NBA season, you know Lonzo's getting his 28 minutes per game. Alex Caruso is then, even if you want to say he's above Io, Io is better defensively. He's better offensively than what Goran Dragic gives you right now. Yes, Goran can still shoot the ball, even though those numbers have started to take a bit of a dip over the last handful of seasons in his career. And defensively, he's not even in the same conversation as even a Kobe White if you look at his defensive metrics. So 
With that being said, the way that I look at the guard rotation shaking out, it's going to definitely be Zach. It's definitely going to be Lonzo Ball. I've said before I want to see Zach Levine's minutes come down some. Lonzo Ball may be on a minutes restriction as well to start the season if he does, if he is ready to go by the start of the season. I just don't see that freeing up 20 to 25 minutes a game for Goran Dragic or anything significant. So, yeah. I, I would assume who averaged about 27 minutes per game is not going to get that because a big chunk of that last season was because he was starting and forced in a role because of injuries. But I still looking at, at Io getting over 20 minutes or around 20 minutes per game coming off the bench for the Chicago Bulls. He's shown that he's proven that his defensive metrics are great when you look at them and, and, and again in a vacuum. And then offensively, he's he's yet to really scratch the surface of what he flashed offensively in um, college. So. I don't see a world in which Goran Dragic is above the depth chart of an Io DeSumo and not an Alice Caruso. Now, with that being said, the Bulls' propensity to play small by the way and makeup of the roster could also open up some minutes from Goran Dragic because we could very well see Alice Caruso play at the threesome. But having Dalen Terry, having uh, Derek Jones Jr. back, um, having now Javante Green coming off the bench for the Chicago Bulls as well, and that's another thing I look at. Well, Goran Dragic's shooting numbers are great. He doesn't bring the energy. He doesn't bring the defense. He doesn't bring the athleticism. Is he going to like where does Javante Green fall down on that rotation as well? There are a lot of questions to go with this for the Chicago Bulls. And I'm not saying that I could absolutely be wrong in this. Right. We can see Billy Donovan come up with a rotation, come up with a, a, a situation in which Goran Dragic is playing those heavy, heavy minutes that were that that was rumored to be. I just don't personally see. it. But with that being said, I'm glad that Goran's injury is not anything severe because that would that would have absolutely sucked i do like the fact that it's not like we, we you don't want to see a player hurt regardless of what you think or where you think i think that they may fall on the rotation i don't want to see anybody on this roster hurt i want to see a fully healthy bulls team and see what that takes shape, whatever shape that may take if the rotation is different than i think if a player is getting less or more minutes than i than i originally thought that's all fine i want to see this team get healthy i want to see them get healthy as soon and as quick as possible because that's what we need right we didn't get that for the most part of last season we didn't even when when patrick williams was in at the beginning of the season kobe white was out and then by the time patrick williams came back we already know that injuries were out of the world so it's it's important and imperative i think for us to get a fully healthy bulls team this season i think that's that that's key so yeah i'm glad that it's not what role Gorn has is what role Gorn's going to be. It's whatever the coaching staff trusts him to be. It's whatever he earns. It's how other players play as well. Whatever happens, happens, right? But I'm glad that Gorn's injury isn't anything severe. You know, the jokes aside about it, sending me into a tailspin and the PTSD kicking in. But I'm just glad that, you know, he's going to be healthy. And hopefully the Bulls, for once, get to start off this season. I don't mean I say start off, but they get to have a, a fully healthy roster also by the end of the season, right? A lot's being made about, I want to see Zach. I mean, I want to see Lonzo healthy at the start of the season. But I also want to see everybody healthy at the end of the season. So whatever it takes for us to go into the playoffs, a fully healthy team, so we can really know what we have. Right. And AK and Eversley can do what they need to do is imperative as well. So that's what I hope for the Chicago Bulls. And glad shout out to Goran Dragic for even what he's been able to do over there in Eurobasket. And shout out to him for like, you know, coming to the Chicago Bulls team, being the veteran on that back end of the bench. And we'll see how those rotations shake up. But that is it for today's episode of Locked on Bulls. Make sure you sound off down below. Also, any any likes, share, subscribes, uh, five-star ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, which also allows for ratings now, not reviews, but ratings. Wherever you listen to the show, get in your feedback. We want to hear from you guys. We want to hear what you think about the show. But with all that being said, that is it for today's episode of Locked on Bulls. You can follow um, Pat at Pat the Designer. You can also follow us collectively at Locked on Bulls on every social media platform. You can follow me at CEO Hayes, that's CEO H A I Z E. And thank you for making Locked on Bulls your first listen today. Now, for your second listen, go and check on Locked on NBA, where the Locked on experts break down all the latest news, rumors, and analysis going on around the NBA in 30 minutes or less. They can be found wherever you get your podcast. Before Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This is Locked on Bulls, and we're out.